This may come as a surprise to some of you, but my background is actually in academia. I did my bachelor's in psychology, I have a master's in neuroscience, and I'm just finishing my second year of a PhD in computational neuroscience. So I thought it would be interesting to explain a bit about why Doom Eternal is such an addicting game. Now when I say it's addicting, I don't necessarily mean it's unhealthy. I personally don't regret any of the time I've spent on the game, and I think that unless you've accumulated like two and a half thousand hours within like a year of the game's release, you're probably fine. But the Doom Eternal recipe has a lot of the ingredients that make something addicting. So let's start with some pure neuroscience. Many of you may be familiar with a chemical called dopamine that your brain releases when you experience reward, such as getting armor or killing a dangerous demon. The current neuroscience view of dopamine, however, is actually that it's released not when you get reward, but rather when you get more reward than expected. So if you shoot an enemy weak point and had no doubt in your mind that it was going to break, hearing that clink probably won't release much dopamine. However, if you were under pressure and had very little time to align your reticle and were unsure if you'd hit the weak point when you pulled the trigger, then that clink is going to give you a lot of reward. Precise aim, like all decision making in the brain, has what is called the speed accuracy trade-off meaning that generally, the quicker you have to react, the less accurate you will be. Therefore, by pushing you to react fast, the game prevents you from becoming too certain about reward. But at the same time, the game doesn't want sources of uncertainty to come from things that feel out of your control. So, for example, by making the color palette of important things very vibrant, our cognitive resources are freed up for this decision making, instead of being required to interpret ambiguous visual input. There is an interesting conundrum, however, since the less reliable the game mechanics are, the more uncertain our prediction of the reward is, and thus the more dopamine is released upon actually receiving a rewarding experience. However, at the same time, unreliable mechanics can also inhibit dopamine release. For example, when we expect to land a blood punch to get a rewarding stagger, but the blood punch bugs out and we don't receive the reward we expected. This brings me to the point of agency, or locus of control. Locus of control regards whether you feel like an outcome, such as dying or surviving in an arena, is or is not under your control. A key part of what makes gambling so addicting is that in the beginning, people feel an internal locus of control. They feel like they really have control over the outcome. Doom Eternal spends a lot of effort in giving you an internal locus of control, which is why getting killed by a bug can feel so infuriating. But when working properly, so much of the game is about making you feel in control, down to the audio design of the weapons, making you feel like you're actively contributing to the soundtrack. At the end of the day, the game is trying to keep you in what is called a state of flow. Flow occurs when challenge and capability are perfectly balanced. This is game director Hugo Martin's fun zone. It occurs when you feel sufficiently challenged, but also in control of the outcome. It can be difficult to match challenge to capability, but the game has many systems in place to accomplish this. One example is the soft saving throw, which is a system that leaves you with a little bit of health when you really were about to die, so that you have an opportunity to take control over the situation by restacking on health. Another brilliant example is the armor system, which allows the game to have really intense moments of you taking a lot of damage since the flame belch allows you to be regaining armor incredibly often, such that you won't spend a whole minute without experiencing some reward and agency. In fact, the game's dynamic difficulty is actually very profound, since it allows for moments of extreme danger where you're seconds away from death but still have a chance to survive. See, two things could happen when you're close to death. If you've often experienced being unable to recover from this, you will develop what's called learned helplessness, which is exactly what it sounds like. You will learn that you're helpless and just give up. However, if you've learned that there is a chance to survive, your body will release adrenaline to give you the energy to focus and make this recovery. But once you've recovered enough health and aren't in danger anymore, that adrenaline takes a while to go away. It's Still there pumping in your blood for a little bit. So what does the brain do? 
It looks for an explanation for why you have so much adrenaline. Well, if you've managed to restack and are doing fine, then I'm in danger is no longer a valid explanation. Instead, what your brain does is conclude that the adrenaline is actually from enjoyments of the game. This phenomenon is called misattribution of arousal and actually says a lot about the brain and our enjoyment of things. But I think that's enough for now. Now, while this analysis has been a bit more cognitive than neuroscience, I hope that you got what you clicked on for, and if you did, consider commenting your thoughts, liking the video, and maybe even giving it a share. What my channel is mostly about is doing ultra nightmare runs of the toughest community master levels on controller, which more often than not are world firsts. Two examples include my ultra nightmare run of Proda and Solart's Horde Mode 1 and 2, as well as my most recent controller UN, which was of Delta's meme UAC Slayer Gate on 1.5 times enemy damage. If you'd be interested in seeing more of that kind of stuff, consider subscribing. Alright, now fuck off.